Good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm David Schoenbrunn. I'm wearing three hats today. I'm Vice President for Policy of the Train Riders Association of California. I'm the president of TransDef, a nonprofit that's currently litigating the eligibility of high speed rail to receive cap and trade funding. We're seeking to have the court show off, shut off the flow of cap and trade funds to high speed rail. And I'm a member of the legal team that fought the lawsuits uh, that were recently before the court in Sacramento. So I have 12 years of deep experience with high speed rail. On the surface, the draft business plan is a nice, inspiring document. Under the surface, however, there are many problems with the claim that the authority can pull together nearly $21 billion to build the new IOS. First, even though the legislature appropriated bond funding for the bookends, that money cannot be spent on construction. No one seemed to notice that the legislature can't just give away bond funds. The promise of dollars given to Southern California was a bad check. There has to be a valid funding plan, not just one before the appropriation, but one after the appropriation that shows that the project is fully funded so as to be high-speed rail ready. They're $44 billion short on that, and so that means this great, uh, a very generous gift to Southern California can't actually be used, and the same is true for Caltrain. I don't believe that, number two, I don't believe they'll ever qualify for the release of bond funds for Central Valley construction. This plan is not a credible demonstration of the full funding of the IOS. Without full funding, no money for construction. I also have grave doubts about how many riders will be attracted to a one-hour high-speed rail trip to then get on a bus to Los Angeles. And my colleague spoke about the uh, unlikelihood of commuting at $63 a trip one way. They have to, uh, three, they need special legislation to allow them to finance cap and trade. I think the legislature would be fiscally irresponsible to throw this project that kind of lifeline when it has no realistic way forward to the full phase one. Four, cap and trade revenues from 2025 to 2050 are very speculative the high risk will produce much smaller proceeds than they need. Five, we are suing to prevent cap and trade from going to high speed rail. We have evidence that the project will increase greenhouse gases rather than reduce them. A win in court would shut down the project by cutting off its funding. Six, it makes no sense to use the high speed to use the GHG reduction fund to build something that won't reduce GHGs for a long time to come. The urgent need for emissions reduction is now when it really counts and not in 20 years. Seven, they're dreaming if they seriously think the feds will pony up more money. And eight, where does all the money come from for the rest of phase one? It certainly isn't from the monetizing of cash flows. This problem is the inevitable result of decisions that go all the way back to the early days of the authority. The new business plan talks a lot about bringing in the private sector early in the design process. That's also what the peer review group recommended, but that's not what was done. The private sector was not brought in for the most critical part of the design, selecting the route. The reason there is no private money in this project now is because the route is a money loser. No one from industry says that out loud because it would be impolitic. Without the enthusiastic involvement of private capital, there can't be a realistic plan to build an entire system. High-speed rail in California can be a viable money-making business. 
I'm a transit advocate. I'm a high-speed rail advocate. I'm profoundly opposed to this specific project. The thing is, this is not a money-making business when the route came out of political deal-making rather than designed by private uh, transportation-oriented companies. Various rail operators are convinced that Los Angeles to San Francisco is a moneymaker if done right. I personally was present at the dress rehearsal of a presentation by a rail operator that was willing to build the entire Los Angeles to San Francisco system and had an investment banker ready to go their one condition was that they picked the route. They were turned down flat. The fact that you've never heard this discussed publicly says a lot about motivations. The authority has pretty much admitted in this draft plan that they have no way to build to Southern California. This plan is the early warning signal that Chairman Richard spoke about it's time to hit the brakes because this project is heading for the cliff with a huge accompanying waste of taxpayer dollars. The Bay Bridge will appear tiny in comparison. Your responsibility to your constituents is to ensure that a high-speed rail system is delivered. They cannot assure you of that and don't even have a credible way of framing it at this time. Therefore, you should look to cut the funding, shut down the project, and ask the private sector to come forward with proposals on what they would like to build. Thank you.